track of modern media perspectives here at Moving On 2019 in Montreal. And uh, today and this time, I'm going to be speaking uh, with David Yang, who is the executive director of the uh, AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety uh, based in Washington, D.C. Uh, David, you know, uh, this conference uh, and the whole themes, uh, we, we talk about sustainability, we talk about mobility, but obviously safety is an intrinsic part um, of everything involved together. Uh, to start off with, I think I'd be interested to hear from you. What do you feel some of the challenges are? I mean, safety in traffic is a mm -hmm. big, wide topic. Right. But what are some of the more prominent challenges today when it comes to traffic safety? Sure, yeah, thank you, Eric. I think really um, traffic safety is one of the issues that sometimes people don't really think about on a, on a regular basis. Sure. Um, you know, when I look at the statistic, um, in the United States alone, mm -hmm. uh, for the past several years, we have on the average about 36, 37,000 people die on the roadway mm -hmm. every year. So when you do the math, that's about more than 100 people die. Okay. Yeah, no one hardly talk about that. When you have a plane crash, right. you get national coverage. Yes. And, and I think, you know, right now, more than ever, safety is continuing to be more and more challenged. Right. Um, let me start off from... Um, the advancement of vehicle technology. I think yeah. right now there's a lot of great thing we are seeing right now in terms of transportation uh, technology. We are doing, putting a lot of gadget in the car, yeah. uh, on the roadway to uh, supposedly to promote safety. But what happening is that when those gadget and technology are being misused by user, right. whether it's a driver or pedestrian, that may over rely on those technology that can cause a safety concern. What do you mean by misuse? How would you say that? So, f f uh, for example, uh, we done a uh, research study at Triple Foundation. What we found is that when we survey people who has owned these vehicle that has, um, you know, um, some sort of uh, vehicle advanced driver assistance system. Sure. For a year Blind or two. Blind spot. Or exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blind spot is a perfect example where we see people have provided responses right. that when they have blind spot warning system, after they been using it for a month or so, right. they begin to change lane without looking anymore. Yeah, yeah. Blind spot warning system is supposed to assist you not to replace your, uh, your, your safe driving practice. We, we forget, I mean, we're trained to, to overlook and do an over-the-shoulder check, right. but technology is almost making us forget that we still need to do that. Right. Technology isn't perfect. Correct. And then also another example would be, um, you know, another what we find out is that some of our user, they have a misunderstanding about the technology they have in their car. Right. Some user we surveyed uh, has reported that they thought they have automatic emergency brake in their car. Turned out to be uh, adaptive cruise control. <laughs> so in those critical moments, yeah, yeah. when you need that system, right. and you thought you have something that can help you to slow down the vehicle, but it's not designed to do that, right. you're going to run into an issue. So that's on, on technology side. But in addition to that, we are also looking into issues related to uh, driving distraction. Distracted driving with all sort of things going on, cell phone being one of the mo more uh, pr prominent example, right. continue to be an issue. Right. Drowsy driving mm -hmm. is 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 a big uh, topic we are working on. But also here in Canada and also in some uh, state in the United States, we are dealing with what we call uh, impaired driving. You know, yeah. impaired by marijuana, by other Cannabis, drugs, and alcohol, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so all those are issue. But if if we can end there, that that'll be. That, that wouldn't be so bad. But when you think about it, we have also aging driver. Yep. At driver age, we need to understand better about how is aging impact their driving capability, their ability to cope and to deal with traffic. So all these safety challenging and teen driver issue. We are, we are, so, so there's just so many things that we need to constantly be worrying about. And really our goal at AAA Foundation and, and many similar organizations is we want to make sure we can find countermeasure, we can find strategy that can improve safety. So, I mean, a lot of these issues, uh, you know, in, in my work as an auto journalist, I, I, I visit automakers and you, you know, you hear about um, safety mechanisms they're building for, you know, the, the, the distracted or drowsy driver, you know, mm -hmm. the, the vibrating steering wheel or, you know, all, the, uh, all these other safety measures. Um, they're working on that. But I guess your role would be to work with automakers to be advocates and to, to keep pushing towards more safety features that 
overcome these obstacles, right? Yeah, definitely. We have done uh, several research studies, one with uh, University of Utah. Right. What we do is we look at the, the user face interdesign of uh, some of the um, uh, infotainment system that's in the car. Mm -hmm. And after we finished the study, before we did a public release of our report, we brought all the OEM, we sent invitation to all the OEM in the United States, invited them to come in to have um, one-on-one -on -one in-depth conversation. And I think that has resulted in very, very positive um, response in some of the OEN. Right. They, we have um, three OEN that actually came back to us mm -hmm. and spent a day or more with us and say, we want to understand in detail how you conduct your research so we can go back to the drawing board trying to make improvement. And for me, that's making an impact. Well, I mean, automakers are making these public statements too. I know Volvo has, has mm -hmm. made it a commitment to have nobody ever killed in one of their vehicles Correct. as a part of driving. So, I mean, that's good. But to transition as well, I mean, safety on roads is not just about cars. I mean, we right. need to talk about the existence of a multi-modality uh, yes. infrastructure that we live in. What are some of the challenges that you also face when it comes to uh, adding other uh, modalities in, such as uh, public transportation or, or pedestrians or mm -hmm. cycling or getting into e-scooters and e-bikes now? What about those challenges? Yeah, I mean, they are definitely not easy, um, e easy problem to, to solve. I, I, I'm, I live in, um, basically my office is in Washington, D.C. Yeah. So on a regular basis, you know, the situation you are, uh, talking about is something we face on a regular basis. You know, sometimes I take train to work, so right. I'm a pedestrian, and sometimes mm -hmm. um, you know I use Uber, so I'm, I'm a, I use um, a sheer I mean mobility. Sure. So I think all these things as as, as we are designing a system. That one thing I've been advocating about for 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 a long time is when you design a transportation system, it, you need to really take a holistic approach. Right. What I mean by that is that. <laughs> When you look at the, the ecosystem of transportation, right. you need to look into the vehicle, you need to look into the infrastructure, but you also need to look into the driver. What is the capability of the driver? When you put a sign out there that no driver, no pedestrian, no cyclist will understand, yeah. that's not going to help to, right. to, to improve safety. That's actually going to cause problems. So I think that you know, a lot of time when we are designing system, we are only looking at one aspect. And I, what I want to advocate is really when you, you need to take a holistic approach to bring really safe transportation design for our user. Yeah, the, the holistic approach is always important because instead of saying, well, we're having too many uh, uh, accidents here because of speed and let's, let's just make it a, a stop sign or a speed bump, right. maybe we should investigate why is speed a Correct. problem to begin with. And Correct. I mean, that's always important. Now, we're also moving into an area with transportation where we're talking about different propulsion systems. We are getting towards sustainable transportation, mm -hmm. uh, electric vehicles, hydrogen. And, and there's got to be some challenges there too because, I mean, uh, you know, growing up, you could always know a car is coming because, hey, someone's got a big V8, you know, pumping out the, the exhaust, but EVs are silent. They're right. stealth mode. What are some of the challenges that come with something like where we're headed? Yeah, so that, that's, that's very interesting. I don't, know, I, I, I don't know enough about that area to speak on, on the field, um, you know, to provide really in-depth uh, conversation, but in my conversation in the past with different OEM, right. They have been looking to research to po to provide notification system to other vehicle to yep. other road users like pedestrian to right. to warn them like a sound that audible exactly yeah, kind of say you know I'm approaching and so forth and obviously another thing I think that's really promising in the future Eric is that in the future um, I really believe that the vision about the, a connected system where vehicle will send si signal to infrastructure, right. to other road user, to notify them about the approaching of that vehicle. I think that can really uh, you know, make a big difference. Well, as far as I know, I, I know the uh, there's uh, was it eight or nine uh, OEMs who are working together on that sort of technology. And I, I mean, that's, that's the long-term future and that's great, but I mean, that will only work when all vehicles can Correct. communicate with each other. And in that generational shift between mm -hmm. old and new vehicles, I know there's still some challenges. Um, but you're, you're talking about communicating. And I think if we move towards even beyond getting to new propulsion systems, we're talking about autonomous driving now. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, some, of, I mean, in theory, autonomous driving is going to uh, make safety uh, a, a, almost a non-factor. But there still have to be challenges Mm -hmm. associated with moving towards an autonomous 
mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure. What right. can you say about some of those challenges? So, so yeah, I think I think that that's one of the biggest challenges right now we are facing in this world is that, you know, there's going to be a long transition period where we can go into a world of that every vehicle are fully autonomous. Mm -hmm. So so how do you handle that uh, phase where we are in this in-between period where some car doesn't have very basic um, um, fundamentals. Some, infra some intersection you go through has your basic traffic signal. Right. I, think, I think that's one of the biggest challenges we are trying to grapple with is how do we include all the driver, all the, all the road user, yeah. That w in this in between stage, and, and I think we don't have the answer yet. Yeah. Um, and and that's why you know you see so many of these specialty conferences popping out all over the world, of trying to talk about you know different issue related to how can we design a inclusive tr transportation system for everyone. Environmental factors have to f play into it too. I mean, we're here in Montreal, right. uh, a city that's known for having winter. I, I live in the Toronto area, even in DC, mm -hmm. we have winter conditions. And if if lane sensors and a blind spot, if, if all the, the tools of autonomous future have to do with line of sight, what happens when the camera can't see the lines? What happens because of snow? I mean, um, are, are you actively involved in working with the OEMs talking about environmental factors. Yeah, so I'm not, so our research at Triple A Foundation doesn't really deal with that aspect, but okay. I know there are work that's related in that area. For example, um, I know there's a you know, different group that's looking into developing digital map. Yeah, okay. so, so in the future, when, when for example, when the, line, when the line is not in there because covered by snow and so, so forth, right. there are digital mapping. But even that technology is still in the developing process and also the fact that in order to create that digital map, you need to have um, data to create that whole mapping system. And that is still, you know, that will take time as well. And, and, and what you're talking about is well beyond today what we can see with Google Maps or Apple, uh, you know, the, the software. Exactly. We're st we still have a ways to go in that field. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it, it's interesting because, I mean, we're obviously heading in that direction, but I, I mean, what's some of the most pressing concerns today? I mean, we're talking future casting, but as sort of a, uh, sort of a concluding overview, I mean, what would you say is the most pressing issues you're dealing with now, six months or 12 months from now? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest challenges uh, we are facing, and we see that pretty much worldwide, is that how do we provide safer transportation for all? And, and that, that obviously, you know, really from different region of the world, even mm -hmm. different city, yeah. uh, there's, there's uh, individual challenges. But I think there's, uh, there's some common issue that, that we need to be grappled with. One is, how do you um, convey the right information to our road user right. so they can follow that? You know, I, let me localize that um, by talking about United States. Sure. Is we are talking about you know, a lot of time is an uh, issue with uh, the, uh, distraction. Yeah. When technology. we, yeah, when people are so entrenched in using the technology, I, you know, I, as I mentioned, I work in D.C. I have seen not only um, driver that are texting, that are looking at their, um, their digital device, but I see pedestrians, cyclists that, yes. are, that are crossing the street. Same thing. And so how do you convey that message and teach people the fact that you know, it's not worth it to do all this kind of thing? You really need to kind of uh, you know, pay attention. For as much as technology is a help, it can also be a hindrance. I mean, we rely yeah. on it too much. So I, I guess one of the things you're saying, especially with the autonomous and high-tech world, is we're not quite at the stage that Elon Musk envisions, right? We're not going to be you know, getting into the car and having a nap or, or reading the paper or watching mm -hmm. a movie. We're not quite there yet now, are we? I don't think we're there yet. I think people want to be there. Exactly. <laughs> They're exactly. pretending to be there. I way. think there's a lot of smart people that's out there that's working towards that goal. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a really, really nice goal to, to kind of a vision to, to get there. But there's still so many challenges before we can get there. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, you know what, your work is fascinating. Um, and I think it's sort of under the radar. I mean, as you say, mm -hmm. safety is not something that's first of mind, right. but it's something that's intrinsically critical to, to uh, a healthy, vibrant, and prosperous society. So uh, I certainly commend the work on you do, and I, and I wish you all the best of luck in continuing to advance the cause of safety as we move towards a more prosperous and sustainable future. Thank you so much. Eric. No, it's been a great chat. I thank you so much, David. Thank you. And uh, again, this has been an interesting chat, once again, from uh, the Moving On Conference in Montreal. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup.